In this video, I'm doing a review of the My PA Planner. So this one is a business planner. At the front, you can plan all your business goals for the entire year, and then you can refer back to that on the weekly and monthly spreads, which are in the rest of the planner. So I do have to tell you that I received a copy of this planner for free in exchange for doing this review. But if you have seen any of my other reviews on my YouTube channel, you know that I always say what I think, regardless of whether I paid for the planner or not. Okay, so let's start with the page size. So this one has a decent page size. It's 7.25 inches wide by nine and a half inches high, um, maybe just a little bit over that. So it is a, what I would call medium page size. Now, because of all of the pages that are in the planner, it is quite chunky. As you can see, it's about 1.5 inches thick. And because of that, it is quite heavy. Um, to be honest, it's probably on par with one of my uni textbooks, so I would not want to be carrying this around with me every day in my handbag. I think this is definitely a planner that you would leave on your desk um, at home and refer to it or in the office, wherever you are running your business from. So the cover is this bendy soft cover. And just from having a look through it um, throughout the week, while I was looking at all the pages for this review, it has already gotten a little bit scuffed. But I can see why they chose this cover material, because I think if they'd gone with hardcover, it just would have been way too heavy um, to be practical. So let's get started. Now, there are a lot of pages at the front here for business planning. If I just quickly flick and show you approximately. So we're still, still going with business planning. There's January. Okay, so just to give you an idea... You've got all of these pages to plan your weeks and your months and then all this business planning section at the front so instead of having maybe two planners maybe you've had a separate business and a weekly planner before you can combine it all into one um, with this planner all right so at the front we get started with the goals we give you an overview of how they recommend using it and then we start with the review and I won't read out all the questions. I'll just slowly move the camera so you can read those. I'm not sure what happened with the formatting there. It looks like it slipped a bit, not in the middle of the box, but that's a minor con. Then we have 50 things you want to achieve in the next 10 years. So I thought that was a good idea. List everything out. Give you an idea of what are going to be your short-term and your long-term goals. And instead of just saying, okay, this is my business. This is what I want to do. I want to sell this and achieve X amount of dollars. It actually makes you think a bit more about what your life would look like with that business, like how you're going to spend your evenings, what hours. And I haven't really seen another business planner ask that. It tends to just go straight into like the dollars and not really um, consider like the lifestyle around earning those dollars. We have a bucket list. And then we go into the business plan. So there is plenty of space to plan on these pages. My um, usual gripe with most plan reviews is that there's not enough space for the goal planning. This one has plenty. So you can see what is your why. So maybe this is where you put your goal. This is your reasoning why. And then there's just so much space for you to write it all down, which is great. And there's heaps of room there too. You can do seven on that spread. Got a vision for this year and the next five years, which I thought was a good idea because I know it's for, this planner is for just one year for the current year, but to know what you need to do this year, you kind of need to know where you're going. So I like that they do incorporate longer term view in these overview pages at the front. And they have lots of like prompter questions up the top here as well and quotes everywhere. Some big goals section. And then specific questions about your actual business. So this part kind of reminds me of like a business plan, but not like a really boring thing where it's like 50 pages in Microsoft Word and you're typing everything in massive long paragraphs that no one actually wants to read anyway. Um, so I much prefer these boxes where you can just put some dot points or you can write some sentences if you like. Just to the point, quick questions, question, answer, question, answer. I really like that format. And again, I won't read all these out, but you can just have a look at them as I'm moving the camera. So it's like, what do you want to sell? What do you need? Even questions like, are there any insurance or legal requirements? Kind of almost like a checklist as well. Like, hey, have you considered this? No, oh, I need to go do that. Well, this is going to like give you the prompter to do that. And open-ended boxes, nice big writing space. I like the font, simple font that's easy to read. Even got talking about your pricing structure with a worksheet as well. Haven't seen that in a business planner before. Um, not a paper one anyway. How much revenue, how much sales you need per year, month, week, and day. I really like that it drills down to that level. Do you need any trademarks? So there's heaps of questions in here for you to go through. 
you don't have to do it all in one go you can always just come back to it as you're working on that throughout the year got your competition like a SWOT analysis there you go just zoom out a bit and then we also have some um, weaknesses section which I think would be really helpful and then we go into the marketing plan which again has tons of questions and things for you to think about your target audience who are you looking to sell to and how are you going to sell to them by what means really helpful questions on there then how to sell them it's even like are you happy with your website do you think it needs to be improved is it designed and optimized for mobile like i've never seen people put those sort of questions in a paper planner before got our sales funnel are you going to sell on wordpress or a website like there's just so much stuff on here it's almost like advice and then how you plan it out like there's heaps on here so i will have photos of most of these i don't know if i'll have all of them just because the blog post would end up being really long um, but if you want to just pause the video as i'm moving the camera you can read all these questions if that um, interests you even planning out webinars i think i saw one for podcasting when i was looking through through before Tons of questions on here. Your stats of what you want to achieve. There's two uh, ribbon bookmarks, by the way. They are both black, unfortunately, but it does fit with the theme of the planner with all the black and white um, throughout. So you could have a page marking where you're up to in your business plan in this front section, and then the other bookmark could be marking where you're up to during the year um, on the weekly spread, even like blogging. There's that podcasting one, video marketing. So you can pretty much plan everything in this front section. PR plan, any contests you want to host, a project planner. So I really like this page, kind of like a checklist. So list out everything and then go through and prioritize it. Or if it ends up being a bit overwhelming, putting, I'm assuming, probably about 50 things on here. Maybe you could instead go, you know, January, that's going to be February, March, etc. And as you're going through these pages at the front here, you might, you know how it came up with that question before, like, is your website optimized? Like, for me, that's something I would need to work on. So I would put that in here as a to-do as I'm going, like, oh, yep, that prompts me. This is going to form my list for the year, all the things that I need to do, all the connections of who you should contact and why. And I really like this page, your monthly, weekly, and daily tasks. It gives you some prompters of things that you might consider doing on those um, intervals. And then you can list them all out here as well to refer back to. So when you're setting up your weekly spread, maybe flick back here. Okay, these are the things that I need to do. Let's schedule some time in for those. Then we go into a full finance plan. Now, I've not seen this in another business planner that I can recall. Um, it was already like a printed and bound one. Obviously, there's tons of printables that have it. Um, but as for one that's actually already created for you, printed, bound, ready to use, I've not seen um, this level of detail for planning your business finances. And it even includes like pre, pre-written out expenses. So you don't have to think of anything. You can just put everything in there. Even things like your personal car repayments, kids expenditure, all that stuff can go in there. So I feel like this planner is aimed towards like someone who's working from home, maybe who's like an Instagram influencer or a blog, or maybe you've got like a cooking blog or something like that. I think this would be really helpful. Even got, if you're going to have your partner working outside of the business, if you've got a part-time job as well as with, with the business, it's just really good way to plan out if it's actually like feasible, how much you need to be making. Profit and loss forecast, very detailed. The pages are bright white, but as you can see, there is some show through of the printing on the back side, so I'm not sure how it's going to hold up with a pen test. I feel like there's going to be a fair bit of ghosting, no matter what pens that you use, but they can't really use any thicker paper because it's already quite heavy and the planner is already quite chunky, so I guess trade-off. Even got your assets and liabilities on here, and then we have an annual overview calendar with a different format where the dates, uh, the days are on the side and the dates go down, so I haven't seen a planner do that before. I thought that was a cool idea, something different. And then we go into the first month. So you can see that was a lot of business planning pages, way more than they normally include. So I think that is really helpful um, if you are just starting a business or maybe you've been in business for a while, um, like I have, and you're going, mm, I'm not really sure what I should do next. And it's like, oh, maybe it's time to go revisit back to like the roots and have a think about what you need to change or what things might've been the same for years and you haven't really, um, 
focused enough attention on them. And I just think that's really good for like a reset as well. Okay, so January here, we have our two page um, calendar. Down the bottom here is a habit tracker. I love the style of the habit tracker, how it's going across the page underneath um, instead of just like a notes box because you've got that on the side already anyway. I would probably reduce this down though because I don't need giant boxes um, for each day just to cross it off. But maybe if you're putting in like social media and then maybe you could put in like 20 that you did 20 minutes on there. Maybe you were on Pinterest for 10 minutes or you pinned 10 things or something like that. The boxes are big enough if you did want to write a number in there, not just cross it off. Uh, one con for me for this calendar is the six rows. So I much prefer when there's only five for each month because as you can see here, this to me would have made more sense to just move the 31st up to here and then you could just delete this whole row and the boxes could be bigger um, for each day. So I will have all the measurements um, done and they'll be in the blog post for the dimensions for each box. The line spacing in the planner, all that stuff will be in the blog post, which will be linked down below. So then we go into each month um, has the goals and actions and project planner. So going back to that front section, when you set your goals, you can then drill down into, okay, what are those mini goals in order to achieve the big one? Nice big open-ended space, six boxes here, or you could just go one goal and then step one, step two, step three. So it's a good open-ended layouts that you can tweak to whoever works for you. Full project planner, even giving you little prompters like prioritize, how long are you gonna do it or is someone else? I really love those three columns. It's not just a tick box. Social media content planner, heaps of stuff in there. And again, these boxes are big enough to write in that you could put um, like a person's name who's responsible for that, um, the day or the date of the month that you want to do it. And I will um, measure these boxes so you can see how big they are. And then we go into the weekly spreads. So it has a vertical hourly, sorry, half hour, no, that is hourly, hourly schedule and it's got two boxes though, so you could technically go half hourly if you wanted to, like 7, 7.30, 8, 8.30. Um, I'm not really someone who uses, actually I don't use a vertical weekly layout. For me, the columns are usually too small. This one, to be honest, it's still a bit too narrow for me. I just, I need more space as well on Saturdays and Sundays. I like the style of the AM, PM. I'd probably prefer that for the whole week instead of just doing it by hour because I tend to just do things when I feel like doing them, not at a set time. Um, for each day, you also get some meditation, exercise, and a glass of water tracker, so I think that's really good extra. There's no um, meal planning space in here, which I think some people do prefer to plan on a weekly spread. However, you could do that in your notes section up the top here, or in a separate um, planner, like something on your fridge. So you can plan pretty much everything to do with your life, except I would say meal planning in this um, spread. Regular actions like your recurring tasks, your goal projects, nice big boxes. The line spacing I do think is maybe a little bit too big in these sections and it's definitely a contrast to these little boxes that they've squeezed um, down below. So I will measure the line spacing but if I had um, a suggestion for improvement I would say shrink the line spacing for these because I don't think it needs to be that big. And you also get a quote for each week. Then we go into the weekly review, so it's super detailed. Um, I can't recall another weekly review in a planner that's been this detailed. Two pages as well is very rare. Normally it's just like one box, like a notes box or one page. This one has two pages and it's got all those business goals as well as some personal like, did you do some reading? Maybe you've got some gratitude, your achievements, social media, sales, new subscribers, and then your ideas. So instead of tracking that monthly, which... I do at the moment, I'm probably going to try doing it weekly because after seeing this plan, I'm like, mm, maybe I should because you leave it a whole month. It's kind of like, yeah, okay, this happened, but I don't really, I don't know. I don't really think about changing it. I just go, oh, okay, that's what happened right next month rather than, okay, next week I need to do this, the week after I need to do this. So I think maybe it'd be a bit more beneficial to do it on a weekly basis instead of a monthly when it's kind of like too far gone already. You can see the big numbers at the top and the month because when you're flicking you'll see there's no tabs but you can find the month quite quickly by looking in that top corner um, as you saw earlier when i was at the front of the planner the pages lay flat on their own doesn't matter where you open the planner um, up to 
see they're laying flat probably because of the weight of so many pages and just wanted to show you at the end of each month there is also a profit and loss statement and the cash flow so this is more so what i do i tend to just look at the numbers not really um a lot else to be honest oh uh, maybe like subscriber count this one i feel like you definitely have a lot more detail to be able to track everything and then all the same layouts carry through 12 month planner which is dated for 2022 again nowhere near the front or the middle of the planner and the pages are laying flat which is really great oops just want to flick through to the back here so we have a review section so a lot of planners don't have structured pages for this they'll just have some line notes so i really like that this one is very um spelled out i'm not sure what happened with the margin here because there's such a giant gap and it's not in line with the next page so that's a bit weird um but there's still enough space to put your notes in these boxes i won't read them out you can read them as i move the camera i like this one what are you going to do differently more project planning pages an overview for next year with dates at a glance calendar contacts which i don't think is really necessary these days anymore to put in a paper planner but they're there if you need them some graph paper i think that grid is quite big i'm thinking about seven mil diameter um like seven mil square but i will measure that and put that in the blog post which will be linked down below and same with this line spacing it's it's gone back to that jumbo size that's at the top of the weekly spread it's that size which i think is a bit too big um which i would i would say reduce it a bit make the line smaller and i will measure the line spacing as well and we have some random blank pages at the back and there is no pocket folder um it's just the back cover which is the same um, as the front there is an elastic band to keep it all closed if you did want to put loose pages in there i just um, left it off to film this review okay so overall thoughts on this planner I like it. I like how detailed the business planning pages are. I like that it's got weekly reviews. It's got monthly reviews. You're looking at the numbers of cash, social media, things like all your marketing plan. I think they're really good detailed pages and I don't see many business planners, let alone ones that go into this level of detail. For me personally, the weekly vertical spread, I wouldn't, I don't really like this part of it. If it was horizontal layout, I would probably use it. But for me, vertical, I just don't like narrow boxes. I feel like I can't write more than two or three words against each hour and it just doesn't fit with my planning style. However, if you do like a vertical um, weekly, then I think this one would be a really good layout for you. So we'll have all those details in the blog post link down below and I hope you found this video helpful.